Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jeff. Today we're gonna to make a video in response to uh, people and their, I would say it has to be ignorance. Not in a negative way, but when I use the word ignorant, I use it for what it's, you know, literally means. It means, you know, um, kind of clueless <laughs> to the truth. And, okay, so there's just a couple things that people have pinged on about Hawaii. Rat lung worm, which I made a video about yesterday. Uh, people saw that and they're like, oh, I'm not coming to Hawaii. <laughs> um, then we posted a video of a couple sharks, tiger sharks. See, a lot of people don't understand tiger sharks. Uh, yes, they live here, but they're not interested in taking a chomp out of your, you. Okay, the only time they ever take a chomp out of somebody is if there's they're in a frenzy, like maybe blood in the water, you know, kind of makes them a little bit mad. Um, or they, the, the, the water's got sand and it's turbid and they can't really see, so they might mistake you for a sea turtle. But I know many divers who dive with tiger sharks fearlessly for a good reason, because they don't have anything to fear. Okay. Third thing is, and this one has just gotten ridiculously silly. So <laughs> people, I guess apparently there's a judge in Hawaii who ruled that uh, President Trump's uh, Muslim ban was unconstitutional or that Hawaii wasn't going to comply with that. And many people, <laughs> more often, more than, more than a dozen, okay that I actually saw had said, oh, I'm not going to Hawaii because it's a Muslim sanctuary. <laughs> okay. Let's clear the air on that one. Okay, I've been to places where there's Muslims. I've worked with Muslims in the tech world. Um, there's good and, you know, not so good in all walks of life and in particular in any religion. It can happen. Uh, I have nothing against Muslims, but I don't ever see any Muslims in Hawaii. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not here, and if you're Muslim and you're watching this, you know, uh, I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm just saying here in Maui, I haven't seen anyone wearing a burqa the whole time I've been here. Or if they are Muslim, they, I don't know. Um, Hawaii Island, I've never seen anyone wearing a burqa. I would, I'm sure Muslim people come here, but as far as seeing Muslim people here in Hawaii? Okay. <laughs> Not that it would be a problem. For some of you it might, but when, when someone says, I'm not coming to Hawaii because you guys are overrun by Muslims, I'm like, <laughs> I look around, I'm like, do you just shoot from the hip and expect to hit targets and be taken serious? <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of silly uh, to say that because there is, if there is Muslims, you know, you wouldn't even know it. There's not any terrorist attacks or anything like that. So to, so to not come to Hawaii because you're concerned that because a judge said that Trump's, President Trump's uh, Muslim ban was not going to be enforced here in Hawaii, for that reason, I, for your safety, uh, I would say you are um, not going to get any, <laughs> be taken serious on that one. Now you can say, well, I want to boycott Hawaii because they don't want to follow um, Washington's doctrine or their um, approach to legislation. Yeah, I know it was a 60 day ban and you know, some people have opinions about that and I have one and I, I, I stay out of that. I don't, I, no one really needs to care about it. I mean, the government's gonna do what they gotta do and whether we complain about it or protest or you know, stomp our feet at the end of the day, it's gonna go through. So you can, you know, <laughs> do what you want about it. But as far as safety in Hawaii with that, okay. So just to touch on those three things right there, those three things were enough to get a knee jerk reaction out of people to say, I'm not going to Hawaii. Between Muslims, rat lung worm, and um, sharks, I'm not doing it. And I'm saying to myself, I actually stay away from the mainland. Because I think you guys <laughs> are the ones uh, in the danger zone over there. I mean, I went I, when I traveled around the world. Um, you know, I went to Thailand, I went to Dubai. You know, I went to the Middle East. Yeah, 
I went to um, Ukraine, which is close to Russia. I went to Estonia, which is close to Russia. I went to um, multiple different places, uh, Rome, I went to Netherlands, London, you know, Paris. A lot of people say those are overrun places. And people asked me, they said, you know, I even went to Latin America, you know, Costa Rica and Mexico and stuff like that. They said, what's the most dangerous place you've ever been? And I, I was like, well, what? of all those places, what's the most dangerous? And then I was like, wait a second, where's the most dangerous place? And I was like, ah, to be honest with you, Jamaica, Queens, New York. Obviously, I, would, I haven't been to Baghdad and I haven't been to, you know, Ramadi or Belusia. <laughs> you know, so. But out of the places that I went, you know, Jamaica, Queens was really a place where I, you know, was like, like that. And I, you know, I, I guess I've been like that in other places in other cities. And another place that stands out is Los Angeles. There was a... Uh, I remember I was taking a train from LA to, or from LAX to downtown LA and the train, I just caught the train because I like trains. Especially when you travel around Europe, you, you get in the habit of like enjoying the luxury of public transportation. America hasn't really um, got on board with that, but the rest of the world's on board with trains. I mean, it's actually a, a, a great thing. I mean, you don't have to, you don't get road rage on a train. <laughs> so that right there is, one thing, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people get road rage, especially when they're sitting in stop and go traffic. So, yeah, I got on the train, and I guess that was the downside to the American uh, train system was, uh, you know, there'd be like people talking to themselves, and they they just seemed unstable. And at any given time, they could like be talking to themselves and like look at you as like, like, hey, what are you looking at? Like they kind of like like, and they you know even even on the train, like two people wanted to fight each other like they were arguing like like I thought they were gonna fight like all all out like fight I mean I've seen it on you know YouTube and Facebook and so you know it's just kind of crazy in the United States so we don't have any of that here in Hawaii <laughs> no I mean there's occasionally a little bit of you know there's there is a little bit of it so to say we don't have any of it but if you're a tourist visiting here I mean you're gonna be not exposed to that period unless you're like going into like some of the you know communities that might have that but they're not tourist communities uh, so human to human dangers this is a safe place like you have no threat okay the second thing rat lung worm disease I mean people out here we don't really get sick there's not a lot of like sickness here I mean every once in a while like we had a little bit of uh what was it? Um, mosquito, the mosquito-borne uh, born virus, uh, dengue fever. You know that happens. I mean, like some people get it, but it's not like you, like everyone. It's not like one of those situations where everyone knows someone who's got it. I mean, if if everyone knows someone who's got it, that means it's really prevalent. Okay, but I could talk to when the dengue fever outbreak happened, where sixteen people got it. I mean, out of what, 10 million people who come to the islands, 16 people? I mean, that's like a really low percentage. And I don't think there was any deaths from it. So it was a non-life-threatening disease that happened. Okay, same with the rat lung disease. Non-life-threatening, okay. In the, big, uh, in, in the mainland, you guys have things like that too, where you know people get meningitis, spinal meningitis, um, cancer, whatever, you know, some sort of pneumonia or some sort of sickness that happens to a small fraction of the population. There hasn't been any crazy outbreaks of disease in Hawaii. So for you to take a, um, a, a, a advisory, a health advisory as a reason not to come to Hawaii, I mean, I, I would say, what about in your own area? Do you know about the health advisories in your own area? Hantavirus, um, you know, they, they do the old Ebola thing. I mean, I was traveling at the time where everywhere, every single airport was, we're looking for signs and symptoms of Ebola. If you have Ebola symptoms, please come to the front desk, you know, at every airport. And like, you know, I was like, I was like, it, it makes you think, yeah, like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like fear mongering. Like, why are they trying to drum up this fear? You know, it's not that I take disease outbreaks as, as um, lightly. I'm just saying like, 
I don't live in fear about it. I don't. I, I won't let it. I don't. I don't have that fear that takes over to where I'm like, oh, I can't go to Hawaii or oh, I can't go to Tahiti. Yeah, I'll hear about it on the news. It's like a travel advisory to Mexico, or you know, like the, someone might put out a travel advisory to anywhere, right? Yeah, okay, we get travel advisories, but you know, just, okay, whatever. And sharks, I've already touched on sharks we, in this video and other videos. I think it's really silly if you're gonna get all worked up and not come to Hawaii because you think you're gonna get bitten by a shark. The last shark attack in Hawaii, let me just give you that. Let's see, I mean, they do happen, okay? They do happen. You, you go to any of these beaches, you see how many people are in the water? <laughs> I mean, every day in Waikiki, thousands of people get in and out of the water without incident. So, um, last time shark attack in Hawaii. Let's see. I'll go to the DNLR website. So, for those of you who are not going to come to Hawaii because... Um, because of a shark you do realize there's no one telling you to get in the water and there's not a shark gonna bite you if you're in five four three feet of water at least not a tiger shark I mean maybe six feet of water but usually it's not like right there on the beach I mean you got to be kind of out there I mean it's here, here here was the last one it was uh, Kauai 414 2017 a guy was surfing so are you gonna to plan to come surfing? I mean, obviously if you're surfing, you might have a little bit of a higher risk, but even, have you seen how many surfers are out there every single day in Hawaii? So, okay. He was 120 yards from shore. It was a tiger shark, length nine to 12 feet. Severe injuries to lower left leg. I mean, I'm sure he's not too, too thrilled about that, right? Like, that's not ideal. Uh, water clarity, turbid. So there you go. That's that's a uh, that's an issue. You know, turbid waters. <laughs> However, there was one on 11 14 2016 at Kamaole Beach Park, approximately 30 yards from shore. Lacerations to left arm, hand, and leg. Lacerations to right leg. Estimated water depth 15 feet. Clear water 15 feet. Species and length unknown. Yeah. So, you know, as long as you're not getting too far out there, like above above your head in water, you, you you're probably going to be safe. Just if I look at at all of these, um, if I look at all of these like depths of water, they're pretty much they're pretty pretty much six to ten. I mean, six feet is the is the minimum depth that would be over your head for most of you. So they will come into. It looks like they might come into you know, shallower waters, but they're not, they're not eating people. They're not eating people. There are mistakes. It's mostly it's turbid, 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 unknown, turbid, turbid, clear. So occasionally a clear one will happen. Um, but it's usually when it's clear, it's usually because they're on a like stand up paddle board or clear, stand up paddle board or clear. So they're mistaking it for a seal. They're coming up to like, check it out. Right? They're using their mouth. They're coming up to check it out. They're not coming up there to eat. Another one says, no injury, shark bit tail of uh, stand-up paddleboard. So, you know. Yeah. It's, it's very rare. I mean, if you've seen how many people are getting in and out of the water doing this, it could happen, okay? But to say you're not coming to Hawaii because of that, Come on guys, come on now, really? You don't even have to get in the water. And even if you do get in the water, you still can put your feet in the water and nothing's gonna bite you. So 
what other reasons do you have why Hawaii would not be safe for you to visit? I'd like to know because some some people make these comments, and if you think that I'm just making a reactionary video now, I, I've read them. Okay, like there was a person here. I'm not gonna say her name or anything, but she was like, "That does it between rat lung and um, sharks. I'm not going to Hawaii." <laughs> Uh, and I, you know, most locals, they'll be like, good, please don't. We don't want people like you here. You know, so um, that's usually what happens is some local will say that because, you know, that's just the kind of attitude that people don't want anyway is that um, just really negative uh, attitude. So I, I'm sure if you guys had some concerns that I'm not picking on you about him, I'm just saying, like, don't buy into that fear. It's not even legitimate. It's an advisory. That's like saying like, the advisory on the speed limit is 35 miles an hour. Don't speed going around these corners. You can by all means do whatever you want, but there's gonna be a consequence for that. Same thing applies here. When it comes to rat lung worm disease, you know? Don't, <laughs> don't get too carried away with, you know, going into a garden and just eating it straight off the plant. Wash it. Or be a maverick and do what you want. <laughs> okay, thanks guys.